Hello, welcome to the channel of RD Automation Learning. So in this video, I'll be discussing with you one of the important uh, interview question that is asked in most of the companies. And many of the candidates are unable to answer this particular question. So what we have done is we have created a digital product in which we have included all the possible testing interview questions and answers that are asked for the experienced people in the MNC companies. So it would include the manual plus automation plus API. So various interview questions related to Selenium, related to rest assured. So you'll get over here and you can see these particular questions are asked in many companies like Capgemini, Bridgestone, SMP Global, Accenture, Infosys, Nagaro, and a lot many more. So you can avail this product. The product not only contains the questions, but it also contains the answers. So let us discuss one of the important uh, interview question that you will get in the automation testing interview is what is the project structure? What is the design pattern that has been used? So let us discuss about the design pattern. So basically in a design pattern, you can explain about page object model as a design pattern, right? And with respect to that, you can explain them about this particular structure. So you have SRC main Java and you have SRC test Java. So in the test, you would contain all the test cases, all the test classes would be there, test suits would be there. The main SRC, main Java kind of a folder structure is mainly used for the configuration purpose, right? So you would see over here, so you have uh, this pages, right? Since you will be using uh, the design pattern as a page object model, you would be creating the pages within this particular package. So these are all your packages. Your base is one of the package, your pages is one of the package. Utils is one of the package in which you would be reading from the config file. Now, what is this config reader.java file? So let me explain you this thing in detail. Okay, so what is this config reader? Why do we need this config reader? And what is the significance of having this config reader.java file? So many times in an interview, you would see, uh, they will be asking you project related questions. So this can also be one of the question, are you using such kind of config reader files or config dot properties files or not? Okay. So what is happening is in the project, you will be having different environments in which you have to trigger the automation. You will be having a staging environment. You will be having test environment, right? You might be having pilot environment. You also might be having our dev environment, right? So UAT environment. So there are so many environments on which an automation tester has to trigger the test. Now, whenever you have to trigger the test, what you need to do is you need to change the URL. You need to update the credentials, which are of those environment and you need to trigger in that. So for staging environment, it would be a different set of URLs for uh, and credentials for test. It would be a different set of URL and credentials so, so on and so forth for other environment. So when you have such kind of configurations, right, it is better to include these things in the config.properties files. Because if you will use them in your test, let's say today uh, is uh, Friday and you are triggering these particular tests using stage in the staging URL, using the staging environment credentials. Tomorrow you might have to trigger on test and then again you have to update your script. And in your updation, in your modification of the script, it might happen. You might do some changes in the script, which were not intentionally to be done, but you might commit a mistake in that. And then your script might fail. So this is basically used for having the parameterization to avoid the hard coding things, right? As an, as an automation tester, you want to avoid the hard coding of the things in your framework. You want to have the parameterization. Okay, not only that, but tomorrow, let's say if someone else from the different team, he also he or she wants to trigger the automation uh, suit in the UAT environment, then they just have to go and open this file, change the parameter from staging to UAT, and the UAT would be triggered in the automation suit. So it becomes very easy as an automation tester to play with the environments. So config.properties file or config.reader file is very essential. Right now, let's come back to the uh, topic. Okay, so you have this config reader.java file, form.xml file. So you don't have to confuse between this form.xml file and the page object model, right? Both are different. Page object model is a design pattern. This is an XML file. 
which will hold the different dependencies that you will be having, right? So it is useful for managing, managing the dependencies. And then you have SRC main Java. Within that, you generally have base pages and utils, right? And then you have SRC test Java test. So within the test, you will be having the test scripts. You will be having the, you will be writing the test in which you will be including the assertions, the validations, the verification points, right? Those are very important. So you would be including them in your test, right? Similarly, you would be having the, right? So on, on the same line, this is the frame, this is the folder structure, this is the project structure, which can be used with respect to one of the test automation framework. Similarly, you will be having uh, this kind of a project structure for BDD, for uh, data-driven, for keyword-driven as well. But this, we have kept it as, as a very basic, as a very simple structure for the automation testers to explain in an interview. At least this should be something that you should be able to explain. Even though you are not working in an automation team, still you should have this kind of an idea because in an interview, they will ask you these kind of questions, right? So we have created a consolidated list of all such questions in our digital product, which I was just sharing with you. I'll be putting the link in the comment section as well as in the description of the video. So you can check and you can avail that particular product. Also, let me know in the comment section of the video, what is the structure of the hybrid framework in which you have BDD or in which you have uh, the data-driven approach as well. So hybrid framework, what would be the structure for that, including the reporting mechanisms, right? So you can tell me the answer. You can tell about the responses in the comment section of the video itself, right? So that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching this video and stay tuned for more updates.